to part eight of Category 5's web development series. You'll find it online at cat5.tv slash webdev. And we'd love to have you join us there. Download the uh, files that you'll need in order to participate in tonight's lesson. And also, bring up your web browser and go to demo.cat5.tv slash 006. And there we go. Hey, Jot. Nice to see you. OK. <laughs> so you're all set over there on the Mac? I am ready to Fabulous. Talk. All right. Boom. Demo.cat5.tv <laughs> slash 006 is where you want to be. And we are looking at, let's bring it up. We're building this website right from scratch. We started with simply mocking it up in Photoshop and, mm -hmm. and slicing it up in both Photoshop and the GIMP uh, with the earlier episodes of this series. And now we are at the point where we are coding this thing like crazy. And very, very soon we're going to actually be uh, ready to launch this as a website. At that time, we're going to be able to do search engine optimization. We're going to do search engine submission. There's a lot more to learn, and uh, we'd encourage you to follow along with us, cat5.tv slash webdev. And of course, uh, you'll see at the top of that page that we also have a very special partnership with DreamHost at cat5.tv slash DreamHost. And when you use the coupon code cat5tv, all uppercase, uh, you're going to be able to receive a free domain registration as well as a year of hosting for only $70 US. So you don't want to pass up that deal. Um, definitely want to get in on that. Cool. All right, so looking at our site, where we left off last week, we got our caption done here. We've got our image placed over here. So now we are in the process of placing the, uh, the photograph mm -hmm. within the frame that we've created there. So let's just jump right into it and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into my source code. Not that one. <laughs> ah, there we go. I'm going to close that. All right, so we've got index.php and right now we've got hello world within our Polaroid div ID. So what I want to do is I want to grab that image which is photo underscore zero one dot jpg and you know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna rename and copy the file name itself. And so over here at my source, you'll remember how we added an image. Do you recall the tag that you used to image or IMG source? IMG SRC SRC for image source equals images photo underscore zero one dot jpg. And the slash is for XML compliance to close off this tag. And you'll see that this is relative to the location of the file that we're editing, which is index.php. So we can leave that as just simply images. If this is going to be in the root folder of your web server, you could have a slash there and it will go to slash images. Or it could be dot slash for from the current folder. Any of those is correct. But of course, if we left out images, it's not going to find that photo because it doesn't uh, exist within the current folder. So now as we refresh, eh, it might help if I upload. <laughs> See, I am used to, I'm used to actually developing in such a way that everything auto-uploads. But for this example, we are not going to do that. So you'll see that uh, my image has been placed on top, but in the very top left corner. So we're going to position that. Let's get playing. First of all, we need to find out the dimensions of that image. Right click on it and go view image. Firefox is fantastic. 309 by 276. If you're using Internet Explorer, you've got to right click on it, go properties, find the information, and <laughs> retype it. And it's anyway. <laughs> so taking that information, okay, we've got 309 pixels wide. So on my image, I'm going to go width equals, because we're not in CSS, so it's not width colon, it's width equals, because we're in HTML right now. What did I say? 309? Sure. 309. 
276 is my height. Is that what I said? Yes. Phew. I have the memory of a newt when it comes to flipping back and forth and talking at the same time. Mm -hmm. like, I don't even remember what number <laughs> I just said. Okay, so we've actually listen next time. Yeah. So we've actually sp <laughs> we specified the width and height of that image. It's a good thing to do. It's going to help the page load quicker and avoid any elements getting kind of misplaced or anything like that. Uh, okay. So nothing has changed about the location of that image. So I'm going to call this. Let's create a class for this because maybe one day we'll have more than one of these on a page. Uh, class equals um, Polaroid photo. Or you know what? I'm just going to go. I'm going to go. I'm going to get even fancier. I'm just going to call it photo. Okay. And watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to still accomplish the same thing. I've saved that now. I'm going to go over to my CSS. And you'll see what I mean here. Go down to Polaroid, and just below that, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go Polaroid. Okay, so anything that's within the Polaroid ID div, but is within the class photo, so both have to be true, then do this. Border, solid, three picks, red. And let's upload and see what that looks like. There we go. So you'll see that this is the only element that's getting that three pixel border. Mm -hmm. And that's because it is within the Polaroid ID and it's within the photo class. But it has to be both. So I could have other things with the class photo and they're not going to get that attribute because they're not within Polaroid. Okay. So that's not actually what we wanted to do. I just wanted to show you where that was going to land. So now what we want to do, let's try margin dash top. Five picks. I just want to see if that's going to move things down. Let's make it something substantial. Let's make it uh, 15 picks. Upload our style.css file. And that is indeed moving down our photo exactly the way that we want to do. So we're going to move this down a little bit further, probably 35 or 40. Done 35 here. Back at my site. Starting to look like it's about positioned correctly. Now let's position it from the left. So I'm not actually using like an absolute position or a relative positioning. All I'm doing is I'm just patting the outside of the image so that it forcibly gets bumped. Um, let's try 50 pixels. A little too far. And you I know what you're thinking. I knew that was going to be too <laughs> far, Robbie. I deal with pixels day in and day out, and that was too many pixels. That's what you were thinking, wasn't it? That's exactly Did it. Did you hear that through I the mic? She was like, Phew. Don't know how you figured that out. Yeah. By the way, your mocking is spot on. That's exactly what I sound like. Exactly like that. So good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it continues. <laughs> Okay, what do you think, Krista? Oh, I think one pixel to the right, and that then we're. Is, uh, that's pretty darn good. It's pretty good, eh? Now, if I were being picky, I would say that the left, right, and top margins should all be the same. If you were being if picky. If I was being picky. If you were being picky, they're not going to be identical, though. If it's a Polaroid, the only margin oh, that's yeah. different is the bottom. But the oh, but visually, the frame visually, is, not, yeah, visually, not coding. Yeah. yeah. So if I bring this up to 32, 33, and make that twenty-nine. Mm -hmm that's probably a little bit closer to visually being representative of being having the same margins around the edge. Right? Because a Polaroid, as you know, has exact margins. You know, sometimes I feel bad because these are the kind of things that I, I emailed to Robbie. I'm like, you know, could you bump that? What are you over? doing? Like, it's off my two pixels. Like, <laughs> he has never called me a bad word to my face yet. So Never. <laughs> I wouldn't do such a thing. No, we have too much fun. Okay, I have settled on 
30 pixels from the top, 29 from the left. And that you'll looks see. looks pretty darn good. Yeah, and if you remember, what we actually accomplished here is that that image, even though it's transparent and it's floating this way and it looks super cool, the image itself is only a combined total of 27.4 kilobytes. That's pretty good. Yeah. So where before it was going to be like an absurd amount of kilobytes, mm -hmm. like 200, <laughs> or it was like 800 on Mac. Had to get a couple stabs, at least one there. stab in there. Okay. There's one thing that's been troubling me that I want to fix, and that is that in your mock-up you didn't have a period after the word happen, so we're going to remove that. <laughs> How's that? All right. So now as you look at our site, it's really starting to take shape. <clears throat> there we go. Mute. Cool. All right. So we've got our menu system. We've got our text. We've got our Polaroid. We we're going to throw some text underneath of it at some point. But uh, for tonight, we're just trying to motor through as much as we possibly mm -hmm. can before we give away some pogo plugs. Very cool. So stick around. <laughs> All right. So where are we at? That is the end of our header as far as that goes. Now we do have the menu system and this and that. We're going to add that um, as well. So within this element, within our div header, let's see what happens if we div... I'm just going to quickly go background number FFF with... Uh, no, let's go height or we'll let the width fill the entire width of the page. Height 30 picks. I just want to see where this is going to land in relation to my other elements, in especially that floating image, because that's, that's our an anomalous item. So that's actually going right up to the top here. But you'll see that the positioning is good because it's within our wrapper. So it is good, we just need to move it down. And we can do that in one of many ways. First of all, we've learned about clear both. But I think what that's going to do is it's probably going to throw it down a little bit too far because our element falls quite a bit lower than where we want this to be. So it's going to see, it's going to put it down here, which is not what we're actually looking for. So I think what I would rather do in a case like this is I'm going to go position absolute and we're going to go top or we could go relative as well. But let's try this first. Um, and we're going to go with the height of the element that we want to place it below. Plus the height of the top as well. So we've got 275 pixels there. Um, say, I don't know, 100 pixels height that way. So let's just start with that. Let's start with 275 pixels. So what this is doing is it's saying, okay, what I want to do is position an absolutely positioned element. So I'm telling this that it has to fall 275 pixels from the top of this website. So it's going to go down here. And let's see where, whereabouts that falls. You'll see that it's not quite far enough. Okay, We need to move that down even further. So let's add another 75 pixels on there. And you can do this by measurements as well, but it's probably just as quick just to, to guesstimate and uh, move things around. That's getting pretty close. I'd say another, what do you think, Krista? Another eight I pixels? I was going to say ten, but ten? that's fine. <laughs> well, let's go with what, what you chose. Well, because, I could be wrong. Well, you could be wrong, but I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> I only yell at you off air. <laughs> right, yeah, but I don't want to get yelled at. <laughs> Didn't say on air. Oh, did I go the opposite direction? I did too. It was 320 and I went down. Or 350. What did I do there, people? I went down, to th I went down by 40. <laughs> All right. See what happens, John. She starts talking about yelling at me. And gets all nervous. And look at that. <laughs> She's off by one pixel, and it was the opposite direction of what I was wanting to, to do. So 361. Let's upload that. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right, so now we want to specify the width of that element. 
so within our style in the div here. And we're going to move that. Right now it's just a, it's just for our reference. We're going to do a 100% width. Let's see what that does. Whoo-wee, that is the width of the entire <laughs> website. So let's get the width of this element, 950 pixels. We're going to not use a relative width. We're going to use 950 pixels hard set. And then refresh. And you'll see that it falls down like that. Now you see that it's covering our image. So now we're going to learn something cool that's called the Z-index. And so with this element, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to grab this style information, we're going to cut this all out, and we're going to put it into an ID. Okay, so I've cut that into my clipboard. ID equals, um, what was this element for? Uh, it was like a submenu or something? Or? I don't remember. We have to bring up the mock-up. Let's see, it's like a blue area. Oh, I don't actually have my mock-up up. Oh, okay. I'm leaving it to GIMP. I will bring it up in the GIMP. Okay, so this is, yeah, these are like sub-menus, eh? Link 1, link 2, link 3. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is we want it to fall behind that element. And you notice that the colorization is not what we want yet. But that's, that's okay. So we're going to call this ID submenu. Okay. Go over to our style sheet. Remember, it's in my clipboard. Submenu. There we go. Fix it up a little bit. See how I was able to actually do some testing within the browser without having to create an ID or anything like that. Now that I'm happy with it, now I can do that. So when I was saying about Z-index, now this is exactly the way that it was, just that it's in, in the style sheet now, rather than within the, HT, the HTML end of the PHP file. So if we look at our site, it's still the same. Okay, I've refreshed, but it's over top. So Z-index allows me to send this element below another element. I'm going to set the Z index of this element to 5. But now what I need to do is I need to set the Polaroid to a higher Z index. Z index 6. And then the Polaroid photo again has to be above that. Think in layers. Okay, so this is layer 5, 6, 7. And that's going to be the positioning of those layers. Okay, upload that. And refresh. And if all goes well, let's see what else have I got behind there? So I'm going to use five. I'm running so short on time, I really wanted to cover this. But I think we are going to come back to that because it's not uh, fallen behind just yet. We're going to come back to that in episode uh, 9 of the web development series. Uh, I'm going to have to cut it off right there.